Live, this is News Channel 8 at 4 on your side. You have seen videos like this time and time again. Porch pirates preying on packages just outside of people's homes. But now Governor DeSantis taking aim at the suspects. What new law he just put into place that will give harsher penalties. Plus, it's opening day at the Sun and Fun Expo. What guests can expect to experience while at the highly anticipated annual events. One day this week you do not want to go. It's going to be rainy and stormy. We'll talk about it when I come back. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Josh Benson. And I'm Stacy Scheibel. Thank you for joining us. Well, we begin with the new law Governor DeSantis signed today aimed at cracking down on stolen items. That new law strengthens the penalties against shoplifters, porch pirates, and organized theft rings. News Channel 8's Georgia MacArthur is live in the Tampa News Center with the latest, Georgia. Stacy, Governor DeSantis says this is a significant measure aimed at those who keep reoffending and stealing items over and over. With no regards to punishment, the move comes amid growing concerns over the impact of theft on businesses and consumers. Here we go. Free the toothpaste. <laughs> A new law signed today imposes tougher punishments on thieves no matter how relatively valueless the items they stole might be. We in Florida have been very clear. Uh, we fought, we're law and order state. Uh, if you do the crime, you're going to do the time. Governor DeSantis highlighted the far-reaching consequences of theft. Because the prices will go up to reflect those stolen goods. If they're not able to sell those goods, if those are losses, they got to find a way to compensate. Uh, so you end up seeing rising prices. DeSantis also addressed the alarming trend of porch piracy in the era of online shopping. You have a cottage industry of porch piracy where people will go and steal packages from somebody's front door. Recognizing the need for stronger penalties, DeSantis emphasized the importance of deterrence. Uh, it believes that we need to increase penalties on those who are committing these acts. So we will raise penalties on people that steal packages from your front porch. They are going to be deterred from doing that with adequate penalties. Carlos Gonzalez, major crimes investigations manager for Walgreens, shed light on the impact of organized retail crime. I personally helped investigate over 75 cases in the past four years here in, here in Florida alone, of which 67 people have been arrested and we have recovered over $3.4 million in product recovery during those investigations. He further warned about the broader implications of organized theft. They use his profits from organized retail crime to fund even more serious crimes such as terrorism, drugs, and even human trafficking. Now, with a single infraction theft of items under $40 are classified as first-degree misdemeanors, infractions are reclassified as felonies if the thief has been previously convicted of the same crime. Reporting live in the Tampa News Center, Georgia MacArthur, 8 on your side. In Pinellas County, a deputy shot a 44-year-old woman who's accused of stabbing her 70-year-old partner. That suspect and victim were taken to an area hospital. News Channel 8's Annie Mapp joins us live at the Pinellas County Courthouse with more on what happened. Annie. Josh, that suspect is 44-year-old Amy Yeager. She was scheduled for a first appearance today following that crime in Seminole Monday evening, but investigators say she's in the hospital in critical condition. It was around 6 Monday evening when the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office got a call of a dangerous situation at a home on 95th Avenue North. It's just sad. It's sad that this should happen in our area and that we're going through this. Officials say 44-year-old Amy Yeager got into an argument with her 70-year-old male partner and it turned violent with Yeager allegedly stabbing the man several times. Police say he managed to escape and sought help from a neighbor. They can hear him outside yelling for help. They let him into the house. As he's into the home, they can see the suspect now coming toward their house. As she gets to the front door, she then takes a knife and then tries to pry that door open. St. Pete Police Chief Anthony Holloway says when a deputy got on scene and ordered Yeager to drop the knife, she instead walked towards that deputy with the knife raised. At some point, the deputy then fired several rounds at the suspect. Police say the suspect was shot in the torso. She and the victim are in the hospital. It's an event residents at the 55 and up community tell me they aren't accustomed to. I've seen about 30 police cars, um, a lot of lights, uh, fire engine was here, EMTs, and uh, 
totally unexpected. I mean, we have a crime report every week at our HOA meeting, and there's never anything to report. Now, the St. Petersburg Police Department is investigating this crime due to a Pinellas County deputy firing those shots. That deputy has been placed on paid administrative leave pending this investigation. Reporting live in Pinellas County, Annie Map 8 on your side. And let's take a peek outside. It is 4.05 this afternoon. A little overcast, but overall a pretty decent day. Let's go straight on over to meteorologist Eric Stone. That's right. Better to have the eclipse yesterday when it was more clear, right? Yep, Mother Nature cooperated there. 82 degrees, mixture of sun and clouds, and it's dry. Dew points in the upper 50s. That feels pretty good. But you can see on visible satellite the high clouds coming in from the west and a few low clouds coming in from the southeast, but mainly the cirrus clouds filtering that sun. And temperatures have warmed up nicely. Pinellas Park, 84. Brandon, about the same, 82. And Lithia, 83 downtown Tampa, even Tarpon Springs, Clearwater Beach in the low 80s today. But the wind is a little strong, 10 to 15 miles per hour. We've been talking about a gustier wind today, and the wind gusts have been upwards of 25 miles per hour in some areas. So the next few hours, we will be seeing those temperatures eventually dropping into the upper 70s by sunset and then into the mid-70s by around 10 o'clock. But here comes the next cold front. We are looking at rain and storms on Thursday. We'll time it out for your neighborhood when I come back. All right, Eric, thanks. Don't forget, eight is on your side. No matter what the weather brings, you can track storms and the latest forecasts with the Max Defender 8 team on our free Max Defender 8 app. Hundreds of thousands of people are in Lakeland this week for the 50th annual Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. It's all happening at the Lakeland International Airport, and News Channel 8's Brianna Viegas joins us live to tell us all about the flying fun. Hi, Brianna. Hey there, guys. So you can hear it. The air show is going on right now it is happening every single day but listen their show isn't the only thing that you can check out here at sun and fun there's this new area that i'm at right now it's called future in flight it's a plaza with so many different things it's really meant to you know inspire careers in aviation hence the career fair tent but let me introduce you to someone who i think is pretty cool so this is taylor she's actually a flight instructor for atp and you're telling me that you actually have flown this thing. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah, so this is our Piper Seminole. Um, this is the aircraft that I did my multi-engine training in, and this is the multi-engine aircraft that we use here at our flight school. So, yeah. So you guys are here to really, you know, spread the word on what you all do and maybe hopefully find someone that wants to pursue a career in there. Why do you think it's so important for people to know about aviation? Yeah, so aviation, I know we all know that there's a pilot shortage uh, currently going on. So we are here to kind of spread the word about aviation and kind of tell people a little bit more about kind of what we do. Um, aviation is something that I didn't know that I wanted to uh, pursue, and it's definitely the best decision that I've personally made in my life, and you can't really go wrong. So I do want to go back to this aircraft. Yeah. Okay, how many people actually fit inside it? Because I see a couple rows of seats. Yeah, so just training purposes, we only do two uh, in the aircraft at a time. But you can fit probably anywhere between three to four um, per flight, just depending on weight and things like that. So about how many months did you say that you went through the program? Yeah, so the program took me um, seven months. So yeah, it's very fast. Pro, uh, program, but it is um, a lot of work at the end of the day. You just have to put in the time and effort, and it's uh, absolutely worth it. Is there a certain age that you have to be to become a part of the program? Yes, yeah, so 18 is the age that we um, do, so it's going to be commercial pilot. You'll have to be 18 years old. So I do want to ask you about your favorite part about flying. What is it? I'm sure you have a big yeah. passion for it, to be up there. I can yeah. only imagine. Yeah, so like I said, it wasn't something that I knew that I wanted to do, um, but it is something I don't regret. Um, the coolest thing at the end of the day is we're in the air. It's At the end of the day, it's you can you look out the window and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. You get to see cool things that like no one in the, in the world gets to see. And so, yeah, that's probably the best part. Taylor, thank you so much for giving me a little preview of what you do. So guys, if you still have time to head on out here so there's actually a country concert happening at six o'clock like I mentioned it's much more than an air show of course this is actually pretty cool but you have a lot of things to do here including learning how to fly too and coming up in uh, just a couple of minutes I'll show you a new experience I will take you to new heights back to you I have a quick question Brianna two things as Eric just said Thursday might not be the best day so for planning purposes does it run through Sunday or only through Saturday 
through Sunday. Through, through Sunday. Sunday. So the 14th is the last day. So people still have some time. Yes. Got a lot of options. All right, Brianna Villegas live for us. Thanks so much. Cover your ears. Loud out there. Still to come from the eclipse phenomenon to another spectacle, Mount Etna in Italy, blowing smoke rings into the sky. Yeah, there's a lot going on. How experts say these near-perfect circles are formed and how often it happens. Plus, the Powerball lottery winner in Oregon has come forward. What officials say they have to do before announcing that winner's name. James and Jennifer Crumbly, the first parents convicted in the connection with their son's mass school shooting, were sentenced in a Michigan courtroom today. Yeah, they were both given 10 to 15 years with credit for time already served. NBC's Shaquille Brewster has the details from Pontiac, Michigan. The first parents to be convicted of a mass school shooting conducted by their child have now been sentenced. A judge earlier this afternoon sentencing James and Jennifer Crumbly to 10 to 15 years in prison excluding time that they have already spent behind bars the judge explaining that this is not about bad parenting but in her words saying it's about related acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train and also acknowledge the lack of remorse that she saw from james and jennifer crumbly and that sentence came after emotional and heartbreaking statements from the parents and the family members of those four students who were killed in that October 2021 school shooting who talked about the loss that they felt and the anger that they have toward the Crumbleys. Meanwhile, we heard from James and Jennifer Crumbly in court as they named each of the four victims and talked directly to their family. James becoming emotional at one point 
saying that he thinks about those students more than they would ever know. The judge instead siding with the prosecution, exceeding the sentencing guidelines, and ultimately de delivering that sentence of 10 to 15 years in prison. That was Shaquille Brewster reporting. Britain's King Charles III was presented with new banknotes featuring his portrait today. They will enter circulation in Britain starting June 5th. With the King's portrait appearing on the 5, 10, 20, and 50 pound polymer banknotes. They'll be circulated alongside the existing notes that feature his mother, the late Queen Elizabeth. The Bank of England said the new banknotes will only be printed to replace the ones that are worn and to meet any overall increase in demand for banknotes. And the one lucky person who won a lot of green over the weekend after hitting the Powerball jackpot has already come forward. The winning ticket was purchased at a convenience store in Portland, Oregon. Lottery officials say they are working with the winner in a process that involves security measures and vetting. It will take some time before the winner's name is announced. But the jackpot has a cash value of $621 million if that winner chooses to take the lump sum rather than annuity, which is paid over 30 years. The prize was the fourth largest Powerball jackpot in history and the eighth largest among U.S. jackpot games. Wasn't us. Was I was really hoping it was us. It Do you have, have your security plan in place if it is us next time? I don't. Okay, we'll work on it. Yeah. All right, some stellar photos and videos from the to total solar eclipse keep coming in, but this time from Washington, D.C. Take a look at this time-lapse photo created by NASA. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Showing the stages of the eclipse as it was seen over the sky over our nation's capital and, of course, the Washington Monument. This was the last solar eclipse North America will see until August of 2044. And from one phenomenon to another, Mount Etna is putting on quite a display by blowing smoke rings over the skies of Italy. Yeah, the volcanic vortex rings are natural, near-perfect circles of gas emitted from the volcano under specific conditions. It's a relatively rare phenomenon caused by a constant release of vapors and gases. Experts say they have seen these types of rings before, most recently last December. But these rings have led locals to rename the volcano Lady of the Rings. Max Defender 8, the most advanced weather radar in Florida. All right, what a gorgeous day outside today. Lakewood Ranch, 85 degrees, mix of sun and clouds. Dew points a little bit higher compared to yesterday. And I mentioned it's a little breezy out there too. But uh, visible satellite again showing that things once again uh, not looking all that bad. In fact, temperatures uh, right now running in the low to mid 80s. And of course, the wind is uh, kicking up there in uh, the 10 mile per hour range. So it will be rather breezy next hour. And as we head toward the evening, we're going to see those temperatures uh, right around 80 degrees or so and things eventually looking pretty good especially if you're going to sun and fun on Wednesday as you see those temperatures are in the mid 80s for tomorrow okay max offender 8 radar showing we're completely dry and we're gonna stay that way for the rest of today but we do have the cloud cover that continues to come in from the west mainly those mid to high level cirrus clouds especially Tampa northward maybe a little bit more sunshine the further south you go now, we're going to stick, see those clouds sticking around all the way through this evening, in fact, and through tomorrow. So, mixture of sun and clouds to mostly cloudy sky for the rest of Tuesday and the first part of your Wednesday. But as we get into the second half of the day Wednesday, I think we'll see a little bit more in the way of sunshine. So, calling it partly sunny for the day. A little bit more humid, and of course, the wind will be gusty at times throughout the day on your Wednesday. Now, rain and storms coming into play on Thursday with the next cold front. I think northern areas will see rain starting in the mid to late morning hours with the heaviest rain around lunchtime. Here in the Bay Area, I think the heaviest rain comes in between 1 and 4, especially after about 1.30, 2 o'clock. And then in southern areas in Sarasota County, between about 3 and 4 o'clock, and it should get out of your neighborhood in Manatee and Sarasota after 5 and 6 o'clock. Inland communities, sh everything should be dry after sunset. Now, there is a threat of severe weather. For the most part, it's marginal, although Citrus County in the slight category, 2 out of 5. Uh, isolated tornadoes possible, but mainly strong, gusty wind, as there's plenty of energy for thunderstorms to work with. Uh, of course, we've seen a lot more energy than this, but still, that's why there is a marginal threat here in the Bay Area. Area. And you see that energy sticks around right as that front end line of showers and storms come through Tampa. Once we get to 4 o'clock, the energy moves off to the south and east, and by the evening, it's pretty much all said and done. 
So how much rain are we looking at? Well, I think we'll see rainfall amounts uh, uh, upwards of about an inch or so at most, but I think most of us will see about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch before everything is said and done late in the day on Thursday. So again, that's the big day. Friday, slightly cooler. We'll have more sunshine, 76 degrees. Saturday, 80. Yep, it's going to be a warm one this weekend after a chilly low. Not bad, though, 59 degrees. 60, cool on Sunday morning, but then temperatures really start to warm up. A lighter wind and temperatures back in the 80s starting on Sunday through next week with low temperatures in the 60s. All right, thanks for that. Still to come, two companies have released mental health care apps that are specifically for kids, teens, and young adults. A look at how the free apps work in just a few minutes. Well, a new initiative in California is providing free access to mental health apps that are specifically designed for kids. Rich DeMuro explains how those apps work. More and more, we're realizing just how important mental health is to our overall well-being. Nationwide, uh, for many years, uh, rates of anxiety, depression, and self-harm have been climbing. The issues especially prevalent among youth now the state of California is doing something to help. They're introducing two apps loaded with free mental health services for residents, part of a $4.7 billion initiative. All of these efforts are aimed at trying to think about how we deliver services and supports to youth 
in ways that we haven't done before, like through their phones. These apps provide mental health resources and even live coaching with no income or insurance requirements. The first app is called Bright Life Kids. It's for those under 13 and has digital resources for common issues. Sleep, tantrums, issues at school, worries, sadness, uh, organizational skills, ADHD. Help is available in 19 languages with live coaching done via phone, video, or chat. So this is really a way to come in, get free access to mental health care, to support for your kids um, when they need it and even before they need it to avoid issues escalating. Saluna so is the second app. It's for those 13 to 25. So instead of focusing so much on treatment, we really believe that every youth can benefit from having access to coping skills skills, building resiliency, and then early access and intervention as well. The app provides self-guided resources, moderated peer communities, and live coaching. So many uh, teenagers and young adults we find are really struggling with some mental health issues, uh, but they don't always feel comfortable talking about those, uh, either to peers or parents or even others. And so this gives them an opportunity to be able to access resources on their own at their own time. idea right yeah it is a lot of things are moving to apps everything and then there's ai whole nother story a whole nother story <laughs> yeah. all right still to come target is taking aim at amazon and walmart plus they just announced a new membership program how how much it will cost and what items can be delivered right to your front door the same day you place an order also ahead tonight these eight on your side stories a historic hotel could be raised to the ground if a developer gets his way. I'm Allison Henning in Sarasota. Coming up, the significance behind the building and why city staff are recommending the board protect it. Tampa's job market is red hot. I'm Melissa Marino. Coming up, the new ranking the Bay Area just received and the most popular jobs.
This is News Channel 8 at 4 on your side. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Josh Benson. And I'm Stacy Scheibel. Thank you for joining us. Well, Florida's job market is red hot. According to new rankings from the Wall Street Journal, Florida has some of the hottest job markets in the country. And Tampa ranked in the top five. Eight on your sides. Melissa Marino joins us live in Tampa with more. Melissa. Hey, good afternoon, Stacy and Josh. What is not to love when you have the sunshine, views like this, fun stuff to do like here along Bayshore Boulevard? These are just some of the reasons, including also no state income tax, that Tampa scored so high. Some of the best job markets in the country are right here in the Florida sunshine. According to a new study from the Wall Street Journal, in 2023, Jacksonville was the second hottest job market in the country, followed by Orlando at number three and Tampa at number four. We got engineers, electrical, sheet metal, pipe fitting. The demand easy to see at this job fair today at the Tampa Convention Center. Hundreds of eager Hillsborough County seniors attending, along with plenty of employers ready to hire. The event put on by Workplace Development Partners, a nonprofit that works with seniors in Hillsborough County to help them find jobs they might otherwise not know about. CEO Yvonne Fry says Tampa is full of opportunities. First of all, we live in paradise. We've had a, a great favorable economy here in many different ways, and, and everybody wants to be here. According to the study, Florida dominated many of the top spots for several reasons. The Sunshine State has become a magnet for remote workers looking for affordability, including no state income tax. Also, a number of companies have relocated to the South. Companies like BNI contractors say they can't fill positions fast enough. There's so much work out there, and another reason why we're here is because we're, we're, there's a lack of manpower for the amount of work that's out there. And in case you are wondering, Salt Lake City, that ranked as the number one in the country for their job market. We are told they have a big tech hub there. Reporting live in Tampa, I'm Melissa Marino, 8 on your side. Thanks, Melissa. We do have breaking news. We've just learned about a shooting at Armature Works. In fact, Tampa police are responding to a report in the 1900 block of North Ola Avenue. That's definitely right in the area of Armature Works in Tampa. At 4.08 p.m. today, the Tampa Police Department responded to the report of a shooting. They are reporting that one victim was shot in the arm and that this is not an active shooter situation. We, of course, have multiple crews on the way to the scene. We'll have much more for you as soon as we get new information. Meantime, a historic hotel in the city of Sarasota could be demolished to make way for a housing development if the owner gets his way. The city's Historic Preservation Board is set to take a vote on the issue today. News Channel 8's Allison Henning joins us li live now. She's outside City Hall where that meeting is going on. Allison. Stacey, well, the meeting here started about half an hour late. The applicant is just presenting right now, and that is the owner of this property. After that, we do expect to hear testimony from both residents and preservationists who hope to see the city save this structure. On 8th Street in the city of Sarasota sits a piece of history. The Colson Hotel was built back in 1926. It was the only hotel in Sarasota that if during that period of time, Jim Crow era, right up through the 50s into the early 60s, that if you wanted to get a hotel room in Sarasota, this was the only place you could get a room if you were black. The now dilapidated building sits boarded up in the center of the Rosemary District, which years ago was known as Overtown, the city's first black community. The current owner of the site wants to demolish the historic hotel and transform the property into a new townhome community. He hasn't yet responded to our request for comment, but the issue is now going before Sarasota's Historic Preservation Board. The city's senior planner for historic preservation tells us not every building can be saved, but staff in this case is going to recommend the board deny demolition. This is a very significant building, and so this is one of the few that staff come in and say, no, this is one you need to save. Now, we do expect a vote to take place here this evening. We, of course, will keep you posted on what happens. Reporting live in Sarasota, Allison Henning, 8 on your side. 
Uh, it's pretty warm outside. What a beautiful day for your Tuesday. Really a nice week so far. Uh, Apollo Beach at 82 degrees and it's a little breezy outside. Uh, we figured it would be, but you see the clouds, mixture of sun and clouds. So temperatures now uh, in Pinellas County, even at beach locations, Treasure Island, Clearwater Beach at 80 degrees, 82 in Palm Harbor, Dunedin, Carrollwood, and 84 now, Brandon Plant City at 80 degrees. Yep, it's warm out just about everywhere. and That'll be the case tomorrow too. Thanks to that wind that's now out of the south, east, and south. And uh, it's been pretty gusty throughout the day, gusting up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. That will be the case for the rest of the afternoon into the evening. So if you are going out and about, pretty mild evening, even at 9 o'clock, slowly cooling by midnight. But tomorrow morning, waking up to temperatures in the upper 60s. Wow, that's not too bad. By lunchtime, we're already going to be in the low 80s. And later on in the day, we'll be gusty at times, but we're heading to 85 degrees on your Wednesday, but the next storm system is going to drop a lot of rain, possibility of severe weather. We'll talk about it when I come back. All right, thanks for that. Happening today, we're celebrating 50 years of the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo in Lakeland. Well, the state's largest annual convention begins today just south of Lakeland Airport. It undersides Chloe Sparks has a sneak peek. These are some of the hundreds of planes you can come and explore at this year's Aerospace Expo. For the big 50th celebration, there's more here than ever before. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world are in Lakeland to help kick off the 50th annual Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. I want to say I believe in the past is about 150 million annually that this event is pumping into our local economy during these six days. People from 80 countries are being represented in this year's expo. It's a dream event to attend for many aviation enthusiasts like John Isley, who grew up in Chicago. My family couldn't always afford it. So when I finally got to come here as a 20 year old, it was a really big deal for me. Isley's dream took new heights as he recently started performing in the air show as a paramotor. We run into the sky like a Greek myth. Um, and it's kind of like if you've ever seen a drones show and you watch all the drones kind of changing formation and assembling, you see the same thing, except it's real people up there. You can catch Isley and his crew in Wednesday and Saturday night's air shows, which run from 7 to 9. Daily air shows are 1 to 5. You're welcome to bring your folding chairs with you, even if you want to bring the wagon, you know, to obviously tote the kids around. There's plenty to see in the sky, but also on the grounds where more than 500 exhibitors are set up. New this year is the Future in Flight Plaza, which offers a variety of activities for the whole family. We have our career fair. We have Innovation Showcase, so all the gee whiz, Jetson type stuff is in the Innovation Showcase. We have colleges and universities that are located in here, and, you know, it's just going to be it's a very vibrant area. Conrad says this celebration will be full of surprises. Isley backs up that claim. You know, I wish I could tell you what it was, but you're just going to have to show up and see for yourself. You can bring your kids 10 and under to the expo for free. Gates open daily at 8 a.m. Reporting in Lakeland, Chloe Sparks, 8 on your side. Now it's time to run for fun. Each Tuesday morning at 930, meteorologist Lee Spann hosts a digital show on our free WFLA app. And Run for Fun gives you tips and tricks to make running more enjoyable. Let's see what they talked about today. In this week's episode of Run for Fun, it was all things Boston. Because for runners, the Boston Marathon is the end all be all. And it's coming up on Monday. And Coach Maria, I know you've run that course. And you told us about how hard some of those hills are. I sure did. And we talked about how to run it well and how exciting it is. And the vibe that you get and how to be a great spectator and love the Boston Marathon as much as I do. Yes, and we all have so much fun with it. So hopefully you're able to watch this show and get as excited as us and have a little run for fun. All right, you can catch the new episode of Run for Fun every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. live on the WFLA app. You can find past shows on WFLA.com anytime. They're also available on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Well, still to come, a new ad campaign is taking a stand against the use of artificial intelligence in the beauty industry. A look at the ad and how it compares to other companies using AI in their commercials. Plus, the airline industry facing yet another setback. What new concern is coming to light as summer travel is right around the corner.
Eagle 8 HD coverage is brought to you by your Suncoast Hyundai dealers. Visit your local dealer today or shop by Hyundai.com. Whether you realize it or not, artificial intelligence is growing by leaps and bounds. One estimate predicts as much as 90% of the content we see on the internet could be generated by AI as soon as next year. That's wild. NBC's Kaylee Hartung has a closer look at the issue and how one company is taking a stand against it. As part of their Keep Beauty Real campaign, personal care brand Dove has released this two-minute video. It features images of AI-generated women that pop up online when you search terms like perfect skin and the most beautiful woman in the world. They then compare those to images generated under Dove's beauty standards, as well as the faces of real women. It's part of the company's pledge to never use AI to create or distort images of women, a pledge they hope other companies will also consider signing on to. A global beauty study by Dove found that 9 out of 10 women and girls say they've been exposed to harmful beauty content online, and 1 in 3 say they feel pressure to alter their appearance because of what they see online, even when they know it's fake. AI-generated images in the beauty space is a growing concern, especially for parents. I'm disgusted, horrified. Naveen Rodwan says she believes altered images of women on social media contributed to her teenage daughter's anorexia. What are they going to do to themselves when they try to attain a level of perfection that doesn't even exist? Earlier this year, more than 12,000 parents signed an online petition urging TikTok to more clearly label AI-generated influencers over concerns that showing things like flawless skin and perfect bodies creates extreme and utterly unattainable beauty standards for children. It might say, hey, this isn't a real picture. This person actually didn't look like this. But subconsciously, your brain's saying, yep, that's what I'm supposed to look like. They're very bad for our well-being and our mental health. Clothing brand Levi Strauss reversed course after facing major backlash over an announcement it planned to experiment with AI-generated body-inclusive avatars like this image on their app and website. Nike promoted its use of advanced AI to create this video, featuring Serena Williams playing a tennis match against her 16-year-old self. The game was the result of more than 130,000 games generated using vid-to-player technique. Coca-Cola owned sports drink Body Armor poked fun at AI content in a recent Super Bowl ad. Artificial flavor optimized for victory times. Artificial? No. Major fashion brands like Revolve are using AI-generated models on some billboards. Ad agencies say this trend is growing mostly because it saves brands big bucks. But some wonder at what cost. It's, going it's coming. Real, it's here. It's real fast. It is right? really fast. To try to stay yeah. ahead of it. And to try to realize when it's that. But somebody who can harness it and control it is going to make a gazillion dollars yeah, if that's somebody is out there. All right, Target has launched this new membership program as it takes on Amazon Prime and Walmart Plus. Target's Circle 360 is $49 a year for now, but that price will increase to $99 when the promotional period ends May 18th. Members will be able to get same-day delivery for food, clothing, and most other products on orders of at least $35. They can also get same-day delivery from more than 100 of Target's retail partners. That includes Ulta Beauty, Petco, and Sephora. The airline industry continues to face more struggles. This time, it's with a shortage of planes. Airlines are spending billions of dollars to repair and maintain older and less fuel-efficient planes and paying a premium to secure aircraft from leasing companies. Deliveries of new planes have dropped sharply due to the production problems at Boeing and Airbus. Some airlines are being forced to trim their schedules to cope with the lack of available jets. Back to the breaking news now near Armature Works in Tampa. Tampa police investigating a shooting in the 1900 block of North Ola Avenue. Police say they responded to reports of a shooting just before, actually just after 4 p.m. today. We're told one victim was shot in the arm. This is a live look now from our... News Channel 8's uh, Eagle 8 HD. We have crews on the ground and on our way to that scene. We will continue to bring you the very latest on air and on News Channel 8 at 5 and online at WFLA.com. And we also want to point out that is not an active shooter situation. They believe it's isolated. Max Defender 8, the most advanced weather radar in Florida. All right, Crystal River Plantation looking nice, although, again, we do have a lot of high clouds and some low ones, too. Mixture of sun and clouds, mostly cloudy for some. Didn't stop the temperatures from warming up. 85 degrees. Oh, it is warm outside. Max Offender 8 radar looking good. Nothing going except the high clouds coming in from the west, and that will be the case tonight and also into tomorrow as well.
you see that hour by hour. Yep, the clouds just don't want to get out of here. At least we're not going to see any rain. Tomorrow morning, waking up to a lot of cloud cover. That means warm temperatures, too. And Wednesday afternoon, we'll have a partly sunny sky. Now, we are watching the next cold front that is due to hit on Thursday, especially during the early and mid-afternoon hours here in Tampa. I would say between 1.30 and about 4 o'clock would be the best chance to get heavy rain here in the Bay Area. Late morning along the Nature Coast and later in the afternoon after about 3 o'clock down in Sarasota County. Now, it's really going to dry out, becoming a little bit cooler, too. Uh, temperatures only rising into the mid and upper 70s. A couple of chilly mornings, Saturday and Sunday, struggling to uh, get to 60 degrees early in the day. But with high pressure and control, it's going to stay nice and warm for the afternoon. So regarding the cold front, uh, most of us, at least from Manatee County throughout the Bay Area toward Citrus County in the marginal category for severe weather. In northern Citrus County, and that does include Crystal River in the slight category, which would be a two out of five. We talked about the available energy for thunderstorms. Now let's talk about the wind shear as you head up in the atmosphere. And it is there, so the possibility is there. It's not high, but it's not zero either of an isolated tornado as the front comes through. Looking at at least a half inch to maybe an inch of rain for some of us once that front does arrive all day Thursday in fact but once we get to Friday it's really going to dry up temperatures running in the low 80s now 81 to 83 just about everywhere we'll dip into the upper 70s after about 8 o'clock mid 70s after 9 o'clock and dew points are running in the upper 50s to around 60 of course the dew points will really skyrocket by Thursday into the 70s and then back into the 50s very dry by the time we get into uh, Friday tonight 69 degrees tomorrow looking good will be in the mid to upper 80s and boaters you might want to use caution it will be a breezy day but either way your eight day forecast shows you that uh, we'll have a lot of sunshine just in time for next weekend high temperatures in the middle 80s. So not bad minus Thursday. That's yeah. right. I mean, we can handle out of eight days, only one bad one. It's usually one right. bummer day, but we and can it's not even a weekend day. OK, we'll even take better. It. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us.
More than 200 remarkable women from all over the country, including our nominee from here in Tampa Bay, they were honored last night in Los Angeles. Yeah, but as Samantha Cortez reports and shows us, one walked away with a $10,000 check. Geraldine Rodriguez. Geraldine Rodriguez is Nextstar Media's 2024 Remarkable Woman. Rodriguez will take $10,000 back home to the Bronx for her work at the Knowledge School, shaping digital leaders who will use technology to lift their community out of poverty. The ceremony in the heart of Hollywood was the culmination of a day of recognition. We all in our lives do things for the people. We don't often get stuff done for us, so this has been an honor and a privilege and just really an awesome experience. Next star flew all 112 remarkable women nominees out to Los Angeles, where they were honored at the legendary TCL Theater. Then, by way of a double-decker bus, treated to a VIP tour of Warner Brothers Studios and will appear on a daytime talk show hosted by another remarkable woman. So we went to the Jennifer Hudson set and we were in the audience and we got to meet her and take pictures. It was amazing. Following a quick refresh, they were off to the purple carpet for the big reveal. For months, these women have been featured by Nexstar stations in their cities for inspiring public policy, leading by example, and improving their community's quality of life. You know, when you get to see this all put together and see the stories that these women have and what they've done for their communities, what they've been through, you'll understand why they are so remarkable. KTLA's Cher Calvin, host, Lisa Gibbons, MC, and the night was chock full of special guests. Dr. Sandy Sook, a teacher and wife of Nexstar founder Perry Sook, who inspired the entire initiative. Plus, a sit down with Jolie Fisher, Brooke Burke, Kevin Frazier, and surprise guest Sheila E. Nexstar donates $1,000 to the nonprofit of choice for each market's remarkable woman. The 2024 nominees have already established a bond. That was Samantha Cortez reporting from L.A. And we again want to say congratulations to our remarkable woman from the Bay Area, Dr. Hillary Stockton. Yeah, she's an oceanographer for the U.S. Geological Survey and heads up the USGS Coastal and Marine Hazards and Resources Program. Very impressive. All of them. And congrats to all the women. Yeah, News Channel 8 at 5 is straight ahead. Stay with us.
today. Right now, breaking news on News Channel 8. And happening right now, Tampa police are on the scene of a shooting near Armature Works. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. I'm Jennifer Lee. Thank you for joining us. The shooting happened just after 4 this afternoon in the 1900 block of North Ola Avenue. Again, this is right near that Armature Works property. Police say one victim was shot in the arm. They also say this is not, not an active shooter situation.